Greetings everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm meteorologist Tony Lawback, also known in the chasing community as Lubaka, the number 81 proudly on my back here. Folks, I've been chasing storms for the better part of the last two decades. Been a full-time storm chaser for a majority of that time. And in that time, I've seen over 330 tornadoes and I have done so on 138 different storm chase days. Now, being that this is the year of 2020, not only is it the start of a new decade, but it is a good time to look back because 2020 is hindsight for us there and it's always 2020 as they say but I wanted to take a look back at those 138 storm chase days that resulted in me seeing tornadoes and give a countdown of my top 10 favorite tornado chase days here over the last two decades so sit back and relax if you are not a subscriber to my channel I invite you to please do so in addition to fun videos like this of course I post all of my raw weather video here as well and of course the storm chase season kicks up I'll be posting a lot of good content on that here as well so please hit that subscribe button join me here on this channel I've got a ton of work already up there and plenty more to come but with that said please sit back and enjoy a look at my top 10 best tornado chases of the last two decades. Number 10, May 25th, 2012. I love this day because this was a day I had no intentions of chasing. I had worked the day before late into the evening and happened to have this day off. This was going to be a down day for me as I was putting all my eggs into the basket of the setup that was prog for two days later. That was a total bust, by the way. However, I awakened that morning and rolled over to see the 1630 SPC update, read their discussion, and saw the three phrases that got me out the door. Triple point, warm front, tornado potential. I wasted no time, loaded up the car, and headed east from Denver on I-70 about 20 minutes after that. After scoring food at the Hay Sonic on the cool side of the warm front and snagging a shout out on Sonic Radio to boot. I jumped on the initial storms that fired about 25 miles to my south and enjoyed a rather relaxing impromptu tornado day. The first series of tornadoes I saw were just south of Walker, Kansas, most of them fairly dusty and pretty weak. This one spun up a bunch of stuff when it hit a chicken coop and a couple other small spin-ups occurred with this group before I moved on to the next storm. That next storm was the Russell storm and after seeing this brief illusion of a tornado, I'm not sure exactly what to call this, I literally kicked my feet up on the dash and watched this beautiful tornado for the better part of 10 minutes. All that was missing at this point was a six pack of mellow yellow and a lawn chair. Wow. When that was done, I returned to Hayes for victory dinner and to get my tornado videos on TV when the storm just to my south near La Crosse decided it wanted to join the party. I took a longer way around to avoid the core at night and got treated to a few more tornadoes in the dark, including a couple of sisters that briefly appeared in the lightning. In total, I caught the lucky number seven in terms of tornado count between Hayes and Russell rolling home just after 3 a.m. that night and was back at work the next morning just after nearly 900 miles round trip. My number nine tornado chase of the last two decades, May 9th, 2015. Believe it or not, this was my first big Colorado tornado day. And what makes it completely hilarious is that this occurred two years after I moved out of Colorado for living there for, oh, I don't know, 15 freaking years. I had seen tornadoes in Colorado, and with the exception of this little guy back in 2010, I somehow only managed to see little land spouts and basically live in its own version of Iowa to me. We got a funnel and a debris swirl. Funnel and debris swirl off to our north. But finally, after moving out of the state, I got my first big Colorado day. Oddly enough, though, it started in Kansas, where we saw the first of the Colorado tornadoes from across the border 50 miles away. Yes, we were still in the state of Kansas at this point and could see as clear as day the tornado clear across the border. But it would get way better and way closer very quickly as we got on the tornado of the day. We were racing west from Kansas and had a terrific view of the wall cloud on our approach, but the storm did us all a favor and waited until we got close enough to appreciate it before it put the tube down. Very, very large tornado. I mean, the wall cloud itself comes halfway down from the base and then the tornado just sits right in the, I mean, it's textbook. 
I don't know how long this thing ultimately went on, but it put on quite the show. This tornado touched down multiple times and grew to various shapes and sizes. As it finally went away, our third tornado came down. This one not nearly as long or big, but just as pretty. The final tornado of the day was just west of Cheyenne Wells, and we caught it while repositioning. The tornado lifted, and the area of circulation would eventually pass overhead as the storm moved into cooler air and became a hailer we'd get under one last time near Burlington. In all, this day produced four tornadoes that we saw, and again, would be my best Colorado chase day to that date. A tornado in progress to the southwest of Cheyenne Wells. Number eight, we go back to the first decade, May 29th, 2008. This is the first chase in the first decade of the 2000s. This would also be my first major tornado intercept with the Twistex team. This was Prague to be a major tornado day, and it certainly did not disappoint. Our initial target was up in Nebraska, and we did snag a couple of tornadoes up there along I-80. Oh, there she is, right there. Okay, we've got a tornado on the ground. Tornado on the ground. Another power flash. But it was this amazing looking cell south into northern Kansas that ultimately put this day on the map. We watched as this supercell put down the tornado we'd soon deploy on. It's on the ground. Wow. Tony. As it neared, myself, along with my good friend and longtime chase partner, Ed Grubb, put ourselves... How far was it, Ed? Less than 200 yards. And again, for those in the back? 200 yards. Appreciate it, Ed. Thanks. That tornado crossed the road immediately to our north, directly impacting the probes that Tim had deployed just up the road. This was also the tornado that went on to produce this infamous scene. Yeah, that's his team right there, and we switch over, and that's our car right there, so. RFT Hetty. Tim, your probe took a direct hit. Okay, this way. This night was far from over, though. This storm would produce a carousel of tornadoes, including my 100th career tornado. I don't know how many we're at. I'm over 100, I know that. Yes, you are. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You couldn't have done it with anybody better than me, huh? I am into that. <laughs> Multiple vortex, various sizes, and ultimately a wedge as night fell. But the final tornado of the night was an intercept but it was by Ma Nature herself. She dropped a weak tornado in the field near us that actually made us the deployment. May 29th, I will always go. Jesus Christ. I can't recall exactly how many miles because we accumulated so many, but this chase went down well over 1,300 miles round trip. We also witnessed over a dozen tornadoes in two states, including my first major tornado intercept with Twistex. The seventh best tornado chase of the last two decades for me, April 14th, 2012. It seems rare to me that a day lives up to the hype it builds in the days before an event, but this was one of those rarities. After chasing Northeast Oklahoma the day before, we found ourselves in the midst of a high risk. In fact, this was the second time in history, as far as I know, that an event was given a high risk the day before the actual event, the first one being back in 2006. After dinking around up along I-70 early, we dropped down toward Hayes Center and caught our first tornado of the day. Not long thereafter, we scooped up this little tornado near Timken, but those were just the appetizers. May I get out for a second? <laughs> yeah, go for it. The tornado of the day in terms of strength, we almost didn't see because we were about to head south to get on some cells aiming toward the Wichita area when we prematurely decided the storm was outflow dominant. But a phone call from the local TV station I was chasing for held us up long enough to see this massive wedge crossing the road. It's got a satellite tornado. Yeah, that is a big tornado in there, guys. We followed this tornado for what seemed like forever from south of Geneseo to southwest of Salina. This thing was massive for most of its life and was rated EF4. But while that was the strongest tornado of the day, my favorite was still yet to come. 
Miraculously, this storm ceased to produce a tornado long enough to get over the city of Salina, but it dropped this tube down on I-70 just east of the city. Somehow, we managed to get ahead of the traffic and the roadblocks that were being set up and got on Solomon Road where we pretty much took this tornado, put it on a leash, and walked it up the road till we hit K-18 west of Talmage. We eventually found a clearing and watched the tornado move to the northeast, eventually roping out. We'd catch another tornado after dark near Lindsborg, making five on the day. This thing just won't quit. What made this day a little extra special was getting to take Ed's daughter Jen out to see her first tornadoes. It was quite the day for her first. Number six in my top 10 tornado days of the last two decades, May 22nd, 2010. This was another spectacular Twistex intercept day, one that many will remember well. This was also the day I'd see my first tornadoes in South Dakota. This was the day of the almost, maybe should have been, EF5 Bodal tornado. Huh? We got up to our target area in plenty of time to enjoy the afternoon as we waited for storms to build, and that first one did literally on top of us and kicked off the marathon. Our first couple of tornadoes we caught near the town of Lowry. Both these were pretty short-lived. M3 confirmed tornado on the ground. But immediately we'd get involved with the beast of the soon-to-be-dubbed Bodle tornado touching down on US-12 just west of the town of Bodle. We climbed through the rain and watched the organizing tornado cross US-12 less than a mile ahead of us. Whoa, it's a wedge! As it crossed the highway, Tim and company up ahead deployed their new tower probe which took a direct hit from the developing tornado as it moved over the highway. Watch out, right up here. Oh no, that's the that's probe. The probe bomb. We are at the junction. I got it. Point seven. That's the probe. We are moving. We're still moving. We want to get this. Get across of this info RFD circuit. Get across the tornado 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 circuit. Get across
I'd had the pleasure of chasing with several folks whom I'd developed a long-standing friendship with over the years, and they basically took me under their wing and let me tag along for this day. Together we saw, take a guess, seven tornadoes. The first one being this beauty near the town of Medicine Lodge, which hung out for about 10 minutes. Not long thereafter, we'd get on the Attica tornado, which is really what this day was remembered for. For me, this was my first major tornado, not only in rating, which was an F2, but picturesque. Oh my god. Oh my god. We watched it for quite a while before repositioning east. Tornado number three, touching down. On that drive, we saw a couple of weaker, brief tornadoes, but the highlight of the day for me came near Anthony, Kansas. This tornado came down to our immediate south, and myself, along with my new friend and guide that day, Amos, made a calculated decision to head south on K2 to try and get south of this tornado. The storm's RFD gave the twister a little bit of a shove, and for a while, it looked as if we were going to be cutting it very close. The tornado would end up damaging this high school, but actually never made it to the road. At this time, this felt like a near-death experience, but looking back, we probably had very little to worry about. We laugh about it now, considering what we've experienced in terms since, in terms of close calls. And this certainly was not one of those in the grand scheme of things. That was a little close. The last tornado of this chase day was a nighttime show near Anthony, this F4 tornado. There is a tornado on the ground again! I had the pleasure of actually sharing this one with Warren Fadley in a driveway. We yapped back and forth while catching glimpses of this tornado and the lightning. Having followed Fadley's work growing up, this to me was the storm chasing equivalent of like watching a karate match with Jean-Claude Van Damme. This was really cool. That is a big tornado. This was the day seventh and final tornado for me, concluding my first big tornado day of my young career. My number four tornado chase of the last two decades is a special one to me and really the only event outside of the traditional tornado season, November 16th, 2015. Of all the chases I've had in the fall, this was the best one by far. Not only is it as close as I have had to a birthday tornado, which was by four days, this was a day in the modern era where I can easily say I was one of less than half a dozen chasers to actually see this tornado, this incredible storm would go on to put out. November 16th was well advertised, and I was living in Illinois at the time, requiring me to actually leave the day before to get close enough to my target area to reach the next day. My target when I left Illinois was southwest Kansas. My drive goal the night before was Tulsa. It was a perfect go-between as it allowed me direct routes to both the target areas, the other being the Texas Panhandle, the more popular option among chasers. When I awakened that morning, forecasts and social media were still buzzing with the southern play, but I saw more than enough for me to avoid giving in to that temptation to play the northern target. I drove to Guyman, Oklahoma and waited for three hours before my storm went up. When it did, I had less than 90 minutes before nightfall. As the storm slowly drifted northeast toward the Kansas border, it exploded from a little shower into this beastly supercell, pouring out a ton of hail as it moved toward Liberal. Fortunately, it cleared Liberal just in time as it began a show that would go on for nearly two hours. This storm started spinning like crazy and put down the first of three tornadoes northeast of Liberal. This tornado would go on for a whopping 78 minutes and would eventually be rated EF3. What was great is that, that it was paralleling US 54, which moves from southwest to northeast, meaning I could not ask for an easier chase intercept route. This storm would put down two smaller tornadoes after dark, and my chase was eventually stopped when I was blocked by this overturned semi-truck southwest of Dodge. In terms of numbers, I can only lay claim to three tornadoes that night, but the event itself and what it meant to me personally puts it in the top four of all time for me. Not only did I play what was considered the secondary target, I was only one of a few chasers to witness such an incredible tornado event, something that in the age of the technology that we're in is an extremely rare thing to be able to say. 
This outbreak as a whole, included what happened in Texas, was historic because it was the largest tornado outbreak to occur that far west this late in the year. And oh yeah, to top it all off, I ended up with this photo to remember it all by. Well, if you've made it this far, folks, the top three are remaining, and trust me, they are good chase days here taking a look at this tornado here, this one May 25th in 2016 near Chapman, Kansas. This, believe it or not, does not make the cut. That is how good our top three are. But a lot of chase days that didn't make the top 10, some of them very, very memorable. Here is a look back at some of those honorable mentions. Again, those were terrific chase days. Of course, the Carpenter Wyoming tornado being one of those days. But what are my top three storm chases? Well, folks, it was a debate, especially for the two and three spots here. Went back and forth on both of those for quite some time. No shock what is in the top three. But as we said, you got to pick a favorite at some point. So here they are, folks. My top three chases of the last two decades. Into the top three, and we're going to start in Nebraska on June 16th, 2014. Most chasers in the modern era will never forget this day, and it ranks at number three for me, and it's largely because of these two, the Pilger, Nebraska twin EF4 tornadoes. This is what I'm certain will be a once-in-a-lifetime event because of the significance of what we witnessed that day. And while it is nothing new to see two tornadoes ongoing at the same time, to see two violent, full-fledged tornadoes ultimately becoming wedge tornadoes within a couple miles of each other was what makes this day so incredible. But before we talk about Pilger, we've got to start from the beginning. Tornado! Because while we caught a brief little tornado to start this insanity, we have to mention the forgotten tornado of this day. The first of the four, that's right, four EF4 tornadoes on this storm. The Stanton tornado, a long-lived tornado that was put down and stayed down for almost 30 minutes and traveled 12 miles, just missing the town of Stanton. The rope out of the storm was incredible as the tornado had lifted so much dust into the atmosphere, it pretty much encircled the entire updraft and only revealed the funnel a few times as it was roping out. This tornado on its own would have made for a career day, but the history was about to happen. As this tornado came to an end over our shoulders to the east, the day's third tornado was beginning to get going. All right, let's go do it again. We jumped eastbound on US 275 and watched as the day's fourth tornado started to form near the strengthening third tornado. We got two on the ground, we got the big one and the little one's got a debris cloud underneath it. We were on approach as the first of those two tornadoes tore through Pilger with just enough rain to dim the contrast. We were really kind of unaware of the damage sustained in Pilger as this tornado went through town. At 4.17 p.m., a confirmed tornado was located near Pilger. The Pilger tornado eventually crossed the road less than two miles to our east, and it would go on to hit this farmstead to the north side of the road. Meanwhile, the second tornado was crossing the road another mile to our east. At this point, we were roughly a mile from each of these two EF4 tornadoes. Both of these tornadoes continued to move north, eventually wedging out, and both of them reaching EF4 intensity within a mile of each other just to our north. We continued to pursue this storm as the second tornado died out, but the day's fifth tornado formed. This tornado, dubbed the Wakefield Tornado, would become the fourth EF4 tornado of the day. 
The main Pilger tornado danced around it before it finally died out, nearly 40 minutes after its initial touchdown. Even to this day, it is still impossible to describe what it was we witnessed, but from a chasing and a meteorological perspective, was one of the most surreal tornado events I have ever witnessed, and it is extremely likely that I will never see such an incredible, insane, unreal event again in my lifetime. My number two chase of the last two decades and most certainly the best chase of the last decade, May 24th, 2016. For any chaser who has started in the last 10 years, this was a chase for the ages. This is the chase that they will remember as one of their first chases, or first big chases. In terms of tornado numbers, supercell structure, and the lack of significant damage in human cost. For the new generation of chasers, this was their day. And for the rest of us, this was just an incredible day that ranks in anybody's top five easily. This was as close to a slam dunk chase day as you get in terms of target. And once that storm went up, that show pretty much was underway immediately. The first tornado took a while to get going, but the storm was moving slow enough where we could just sit, watch, and wait. And when it finally put down, it stayed down for a long time. During this sequence, this storm put out numerous tornadoes, including this pair which touched down south of Dodge City. Two tornadoes ongoing right now. At one point, it put down three at the same time, but I was personally too busy navigating the mud roads and missed grabbing a shot of that. What I did get was a shot of me in front of my 300th career tornado. I believe this was the fourth or fifth tornado of the day to this point. I don't recall what I needed going in, but I knew I was keeping track enough then to know. Things did get a little hairy as the storm approached Dodge City and was still producing tornadoes. The storm was spinning as fast as I've seen a whole storm spin, and fortunately was moving more north than east, which allowed this monster to pass to the west of town. North of town, the supercell continued to spit out tubes and for what felt like the 17th time in the last few hours, had two tornadoes going at once. The storm eventually moved out of its tornado favored environment and as a result, we trotted east to another storm, briefly catching glimpses of a couple more smaller reefer tornadoes before being treated to this incredibly epic rainbow sunset that ended this career day. This was another day for me that racked up over a dozen tornadoes and hundreds of miles, but was one of the best chases in the last decade, hands down. The number one tornado chase in the first two decades, May 29th, 2004, you simply can't argue with a classic. There is no chase that stands out better in my memory than this day back in 04. Not only was this one of my first major storm chases of my career, this was my first double-digit tornado day, and it produced what I consider to be the most incredible tornado sequence I have ever seen. Morning, folks. 
time is uh, about 10, 15 minutes after five o'clock in the morning. The day started early for me as I left from Denver early that morning and then eventually met up with my good friend Blake at the QT station in Park City, Kansas, just north of Wichita. We goofed around there until storms developed off to the west and then we headed out. Somehow I became separated from him en route to that storm and thus began the day spent entirely by myself. Tornado on the ground, there's the structure of the storm. As I got on the storms, I saw the first series of tornadoes from afar. This storm put down three tornadoes east and north of Attica over toward Harper. I was well south of these tornadoes looking north at them, and I got a little bit closer to this storm as the second series of tornadoes near Argonia along US 160 started to begin. It's like it's a large, large wedge tornado on the ground. I was looking back to the west on 160 at this large dusty wedge tornado as it was slowly moving toward the east, coming at me. As it was churning just south of the highway, a satellite tornado came down on US 160. There's another one. That one's on the ground. This sequence would give way to the main show, which at the time I called the Devil's Dance. This was an intense multi-vortex tornado south of Conway Springs. This storm was spinning to beat the band before it started dropping all these tubes. The wall cloud teasing forever before the initial touchdown. Of that is it is spinning right over where I was just positioned. And from there, it would produce an almost choreographed dance, reaching a rating of F3 south of Conway Springs. Tornado on the ground. I watched this series for the better part of 15 minutes. Several other tornadoes came down immediately after this sequence, but I didn't have to move as the storm itself was barely moving north, albeit away from me. I did catch a couple other tornadoes while repositioning, including this one I caught over my shoulder somewhere between Belle Plaine and Conway Springs as I was northbound. The day ended for me at the Newell truck stop in Newton where I had had a steak dinner while I was editing my video for TV. The Conway Springs tornado would be my first ever tornado video to hit national television and do so on the Weather Channel. The wait staff whom I was chatting about the day with through my meal and editing actually gave me my steak dinner for free in thanks for my spotting of the storms of the day. Back then, this was still kind of a new thing, so I guess that's kind of why I got that response, but it just capped off what was truly a perfect chase day for me. It would be so easy to put any uh, number of a couple other chases in the last decade into this top spot. And believe me, I battled back and forth with it. But what makes this my number one chase of the last two decades, and again, let's be real, probably my number one chase for my lifetime, is the time period in which this all took place. First of all, this was some of my firsts. I had been chasing on and off since the late 90s, and 2004 was my first full-time season in the field. I had a pretty minimal amount of gear, I had a minimal amount of experience, and this was well before social media, her, other high-res, go-here models, I had forecasted this event several days out, coordinated with Blank to meet him in Kansas, and then I ended up tracking these tornadoes on my own throughout the day. Now, granted, this was still a pretty easy chase. This was a slow-moving storm that you basically just kind of had to stick with. There wasn't a whole lot of navigation to it, but nonetheless, for me, this was my first solo major tornado chase day. I counted over a dozen tornadoes on the day, and when I arrived back home in Denver the next day, I had driven a total of 1,417 miles round trip. Add to all of that, this being the first tornado video I put on TV and the Weather Channel, the incredible hospitality and the free meal from the truck stop. And mind you, at that time, I was chasing broke. I was sleeping out of my car for uh, that night before I got home. This will be a chase that will likely cement itself as my favorite tornado chase of all time. I don't know what that makes it for the day. We might be close to double digits by now. And there you have it, folks, my top 10 favorite tornado chase days 
of the last two decades. It was really a no brainer. The number one spot here. You can't turn down a good chase in Kansas and you got to go back to where it all started. And of course, Kansas offering several of those top 10 chases, and I cannot imagine that Kansas will not make appearance on future top 10s here as I continue to move forward in my storm chasing career. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Lots of great content to come here over the future. Lots of storm chasing stuff coming. And of course, I've just got a whole wealth of excellent weather videos that I have posted for the better part of the last two decades. But it has been an absolute privilege and so much fun to bring you this top 10. I hope to see you again here on future videos and of course, more chases to come here as the spring starts to kick up here in 2020. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.